Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Victor once again. It's another day, so we have another scholarship. Today we are in Australia in search of masters and PhD funded opportunities. We're looking specifically at the Australian government RTP scholarship. I believe this is the research training program scholarship for international students, of course. So it's a well-funded program. And if you get this scholarship, you would receive 35,950 Australian dollars. 35,950 Australian um, dollars for your um, tuition to cover your living costs, as you can see here. Upset your tuition, and I believe this 35,000 is to cover your living stipend as an international postgraduate student. So how do you apply for this? It's for both those who are current students here, that's current students at this university and new or incoming students. So for current students, there's a link here on how to apply. But I, I assume that most people watching this are intending students, prospective students. So for new students, a commencing student, there is no separate application. So a separate application is not required as stated here. So what do you do? You just check a box. So commencing students should select the checkbox to be considered for the research scholarships when completing the admission application or postgraduate research degree. So there's no separate application while you're applying for admission for your desired course, you just take a box that you want to be considered for the ROTP scholarship. Um, regarding deadlines, we are a little bit pressed with time, I must say. So the nearest deadline to us at the moment is the 30th of September. And this video might come out on the 12th. So you have like 18 days to put things together. It's quite tight, but try to do it as much as you can. The good thing about this format is that most universities in Australia also use this format of application. So even if you're not getting to University of Sydney, you can use the same format to get into all the kinds of universities in Australia with them different, with their different application windows and their uh, deadlines as well. So you can see the benefits here, what you receive, as we've seen earlier, to cover living cost. And here you can see health insurance as well and um, tuition fees. So it's for those applying for a master's or a PhD and master's by research to be um, precise, master's by research or a PhD. A master's by research is like a mini PhD where you come in and you're graded mostly by the kind of research that you do. Why a PhD, as you most of you might know, is heavily research focused. So um, contrary to a taught master's, where you attend classes, you take exams, a research master's, yes, you still attend classes, but the bulk of the assessment is based on the kind of research you do for the department and you work with your supervisors. So how do you apply? So there's, there's a frequently asked question session here, but I'll take you straight to um, information for international students and available courses. Remember we're talking about research courses. This scholarship is for research courses, either a research master's or a PhD. So let's open this postgraduate research courses. Remember I went here, international students, and then postgraduate research. So these are different bits of information, including this scholarship we looked at earlier. But then we're looking for the courses. So you click on research with us. Research with us. Very soon I'll be talking about the English language requirements. There's good news, but just stay with me. Let's take it bit by bit. So research with us, you see things about the department, about the universities and every other thing. Then the degrees, the different kinds of degrees, you see masters by research that we talked about, or a PhD, these are the two degrees eligible for this scholarship. The two degrees eligible for this scholarship. So how do we get started? You can always get more information here. So since it's a research-based course, you need a supervisor. 
you have to find somebody at this university researching an area of interest in your area of interest so you need the blessing of a supervisor to be able to put forward a competitive application in the first place and here you can always search for different supervisors at the university so there are lots of information here i can't go through all of them one by one it's just to give you an idea of um, what you might um, require in applying for this position as you can see you can find the supervisor here already by typing like your area of interest or if you know a supervisor's name already you can type it there or your general field and see those available so you can see more on how to apply and get more info there so here there's a step-by-step -step four point um, direction on how to apply so check your eligibility criteria usually you're supposed to have like a, a bsc already or a master's if you're applying for a phd and you are meant to develop a research proposal and find a supervisor so the number of people get wary when they hear this for the research proposal is actually not very difficult that's the area of research you're interested in you have like a topic in mind and what are the pressing questions or what is the pressing question in that area and just do a brief literature review and then the gap in the literature the gap that you hope to fill that's um, what a proposal is all about there's actually a video on this channel on how to write a proposal and i'll be showing that to you shortly so as i said there's a video on this channel on how to write a research proposal so just scroll down there are different videos on this channel, by the way, that would help your application process. So just scroll down, go to motivation letters, statement of purpose and research proposal. So here, I described how I wrote my multi-award winning research proposal step by step. You could use the same um, step to get um, your own proposal in, in place as well. So let's go back. So find the supervisor send the supervisor your proposal and apply for admission and the other um, applications requirements as well so these are broken down the four points you saw earlier here are broken down into smaller understandable details here as you can see so just scroll down read through carefully you can see things about research proposal and faculty how to find a supervisor then apply for admission funding. Make sure your documents are in place. It's probably a good time to also talk about the English requirements. So it's written here, English requirements. English, yeah, English qualifications, I mean, this is it here. Then your resume, your CV. Also on my channel, I described how to write an academic CV. So you can always see that here as well. So. Do not worry about that. So for the English requirements, I've checked it out quickly. And there are a lot of exemptions for those who studied at these um, countries. So if you have your undergraduate degree from any of these countries, you do not need to submit um, an English test. So I can see Nigeria here already. I can see Ghana. There is Singapore. There is Zimbabwe. There's Canada, Botswana, you can see the list here. And there are other ways of getting exemption. So just check the list. You might just be exempted and you wouldn't need to submit IELTS or TOEFL exam. So that's good. So remember the supervisor thing we talked about. So you can talk about, um, let's see, maybe green energy. If there is anybody in the department working on green energy and see so these are different professors working on this so what you're meant to do is check their profile see what they are doing and see whether it aligns with your area of interest and if it does send them an email and also send them a copy of that proposal there are guidelines here on how to write a proposal as well guidelines on how to write a research proposal follow that you can also follow the guidelines on my channel as well on how to write a proposal so with those two materials you can come up with something competitive so type in find an expert find a supervisor 
So look for people around the department who might just be interested in um, your area of research. So let's put here data science. Remember you have just a little over two weeks. So you want to start contacting supervisors as soon as possible. So you can see people work, working on data science. I think this professor works on data science and environmental sciences. This person works on computer science, the faculty of engineering. So you can see these different people. So if you're interested in this, send them an email and see. Hopefully you get a reply. And I hope this was useful, guys. Fully funded masters by research and PhD at the University of Sydney in Australia. Remember the deadline is on the 30th of September. So put in all the work and hopefully we'll be shouting your name by this time next year or even sooner than that. And as usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you. There are numerous opportunities coming your way during the season and try to catch at least one by doing your own due diligence by reading through these application requirements and compiling a competitive application. So guys, I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now.